And I would like to call uh, our colleague Astrid Grillon from INRAI at Montferrier sur Les in France. And she will speak about uh, the importance of multidisciplinary studies on insect vectors to better understand vector borne plant diseases. Please, Astrid. Thank you, Michel. So, um, why vectors? So, I remember at the beginning of the European crisis, uh, most of the attention was focused on plants, actually. So, it was a little surprising to me because, you know, nobody will ever study malaria or dengue without studying mosquitoes. And, of course, if we want to better understand how to uh, control the spread of Zilla in the ecosystem, we need studies on vectors. And as Domenico, Domenico sorry, said, it is even more important because virtually nothing was known for European vector, <coughs> vectors when we started the, the project. So as you have seen, and as you will see, significant progresses have been made on this aspect. And in my talk, I will report on the studies we have conducted with my research group in the framework of XF factors, but also other uh, national, so French uh, projects. So, of course, when you want to work on a vector, you need to be able to identify them. So, as you may know, the identification based on morphological characters can be difficult. Sometimes it's even impossible if you want to try to identify eggs or nymphs, for example. And in any case, it's always very time consuming. So, if you want to do massive survey of community of vectors, it is better if you can rely on a molecular tool. But it is only feasible if you have a well uh, curated reference database of sequences. So, that was our first objective in the framework of the project to build this curated C1 database for European vectors. So, we have samples of uh, vectors everywhere in Europe, several specimens per species when it was possible in different locations. We have implemented non-destructive DNA extraction methods to go back to the voucher when it was necessary. And we have implemented a high throughput approach with a two-step PCR followed by MySeq sequencing. And we have done many bioinformatic controls to make sure that the C1 sequences that were uploaded in the database were actually the C1 sequences of the, ve the vectors. So here you have the links to our website uh, with the database. And if you click on this link, you will have access to C1 sequences for all frequent European species of potential vectors, 74. We have also barcoded a couple of non-European species. You will also find pictures of habitus and genitalia. And you can query your own C1 sequence. We have a BLAST tool search and you will get an identification of your query. Well, at least for 80% of the species, because actually for some of them, we have some issues. So there may be some synonyms and also some species complexities. So clarification are needed and are in progress. If you are interested in having more detail on this aspect of, of our research, you can take a look to a poster. I have printed the DUI here. So, um, as soon as Philinus primarius was confirmed as an efficient vector of Xylella by Maria Saponari and her collaborators, uh, I think just like uh, many other researchers in Europe, we wanted to know better our enemy. And um, we were especially interested in uh, better understand how uh, climate and vegetation uh, may drive its uh, abundance uh, in semi-natural habitats. So from now, I'm going to present results of research we have conducted in, uh, in Corsica. So we have uh, monitored the density of Phenolis primarius three times a year during three years in 64 plots throughout Corsica. We have a third pair form visual counting of white foam blobs for nymphs. 
or uh, sweep netting of uh, adults, as uh, Anna described in her talk. And in parallel, we have uh, described the vegetation and we have also retrieved the daily temperature for all these plots from weather databases. And we have analyzed all this data with generalized linear mixed model. So I'm going to present the results on the next slide. Uh, as you can see on the left uh, bottom panel, the abundance of Philinus pumarius is positively correlated with the density of Cystus mospodiensis, which is a plant that is very, very abundant in the Corsican Maki. So this contrasts with what we have in mainland France and other countries in Europe, uh, where uh, the adults appears to be much more polyphagous. So what we think, but it's only a hypothesis, is that the expansion of Zilela in Corsica may have been facilitated by the presence of disturbed habitats and even also by fire wrecks, because the Cystus mompoliensis is a plant that is an early colonizer just after the fire wrecks. And then on the right uh, panel here, you can see that the abundance of Philenus pumarius negatively correlates with increasing temperature. So especially in summer in Corsica, the role of Philenus pumarius as a vector is, is reduced. So we may have importance for other vectors. So now uh, I switch from semi-natural habitats to, to crops and I under, uh, sorry, I enlarge the scope from uh, Philinus pimorius to other uh, spittle bugs. So we have conducted surveys of uh, spittle bugs in and in the vicinity of 16 organic clementine and olive crops in Corsica. So we have monitored the spittle bugs that were found on the crop foliage on the ground vegetation, on Cystus mompoliensis in the vicinity of the crops, and also on another plant here that uh, is probably a good host plant for spittle box. And we have built a um, seasonal interaction uh, network. So here on the slide, PS is for Philonis pimorius, LC is for Lepiornia coleoptrata, AA is for Aphorora alni, and NC is for Neophilinus campestris. CM is for cystus, GB is for ground vegetation. And so for the spring, you can see that we have strong host preferences, a lot of Philonus pumarius, and no nymphs on crop foliage in the spring. Then we move and, and, and almost uh, no Philonus pumarius on the ground vegetation. Then we move to summer. And actually in summer, so we find the four spittle bugs, but very few, very few spittle bugs. And only Afrophora alni and Lepiornia coleoptrata on crop foliage. So it means that um, we have no, in Corsica, we have no summer migration of uh, Philenus primaris to crop foliage, as is observed in Italy, for example. So it contrasts. Then this is the network for the fall, so much more uh, adults. The network is much more complex, which, as you can see here, the component Philonus primarius cystus mospedensis is uh, a really major component of this uh, network. And we found uh, all species of spittle bug, uh, uh, but uh, Lepironia columptrata on crop foliage. So it means that in Corsica, we really need to investigate the possible implication of other vectors than Philinus pumarius. So uh, the take-home message for this is that a salt hillage again Philinus pumarius in Corsica may be less efficient than in Italy, but by contrast, the management of Cystus mospeliensis borders uh, may decrease the threat posed by uh, Philinus to crops. So again, I can't go more into detail so if you want to know more, uh, you can take a look. We have two posters, so one on uh, crops and uh, one on uh, semi-natural habitats. So um, of course, uh, Philonus, well, is like a common, common enemy, but we believe we could also um, take uh, advantage from, from this uh, spittle bug. 
because um and it has always been said but the, it could be really the, the perfect sentinel to help us to to detect the, the bacterium in the environment so as you know uh, the monitoring of xylella is usually carried out by analyzing symptomatic plants as and as you know as well plants are frequently asymptomatic and I remember yesterday, uh, the colleague from uh, the INRA Angers, they tried to date the, the introduction of Xylella into Corsica. And so they found uh, like between the end of the 70s, the end of the 80s, 90s. So it means that if it's true, we are missing the bacterium for years. Well, so, um, well, so it means something. And, and to us, really generalize the use of insect vectors as sentinel to complement plant uh, survey makes sense. And as it has been said by Domenico, Philenus is really everywhere. And uh, according to species distribution modeling, it could be really, really everywhere. So we have tested this approach of insect sentinel in a, in a first paper here with nested PCR and Sanger sequencing. So we got encouraging results. But the high throughput approach was still needed. So this is what we try to um, develop here. So you have the, the general workflow. So basically, we do DNA extraction. Uh, so we do it specimen by specimen. And then we implement a two-step PCR approach, actually the same kind of approach we have used to build the C1 reference database. If you want to have more detail on this two-step PCR approach, the method itself, you can refer to that paper. So actually, um, so we do two successive pathways. In the first PCR, the target region, which is one locus of the uh, MSD scheme of Xylella fasciosa, is amplified with specific primers that are flanked by tails. And these tails, they allow for a second PCR reaction to add Illumina adapters and indexes to multiplex samples. Then after, you can do MySeq sequencing, for example, and bioinformatics to get uh, identification of the species if you include uh, other uh, loci of the MLST in your, in your two steps PCR. So we have used this approach to monitor the spatiotemporal prevalence of Xylella within population of Spilenus pumaris in Corsica. We have screened 27 populations of 30 specimens each, so more are coming. And to be sure not to miss uh, any false negatives, we have conducted four uh, replicates of PCR for each specimens. So here are uh, our first results. So as you can see on this on those map, uh, Xylella is uh, spread throughout Corsica, and uh, it's present in presumably uncontaminated areas based on uh, plant monitoring. And according to these first results, there is no special, no temporal or no vegetation-related pattern of prevalence. So um, the take-home message is that so Xila introduction to Corsica likely predate 2015, and we have seen that with uh, genetic analysis and dating uh, experiments. So what we believe is that at least uh, until now, uh, we could have had uh, ecological resilience of Corsica systems that could be linked uh, to plant diversity on lack of uh, monoculture farming. So the, the question is, uh, how can, uh, what, what can be, what factors uh, could uh, make the condition uh, worse? And then the last take-home message is, thank you. Sentinel insects are a good complement to plant survey. So this is, uh, uh, this is my last, my two last slides. Um, so I think, of course, finally, as, as many other, uh, we were interested in finding a way to, to control the, the population of uh, Philenus pumarius. So there is still an overlooked research field, which is biological control. Uh, that could be an environmental friendly lever to help lower the, the density of this sector. But of course, we need to find the perfect uh, natural enemies. So to, to try to do so, we have collected eggs of Philenus pumarius throughout Corsica, uh, about 1,000 eggs, and we have monitored the, the emergence 
uh, we, we, we have monitored what was emerging from, from these eggs. And actually, uh, in some cases, we had the nymphs, but in some of the cases, we had this uh, tiny creature here. So this is a, a wasp from uh, the sperm family Cancidoidea, the family is Mimoridae, and its name is Octonus fulgatus. And actually, even in some places, you had no parasitism. In some other places, you could have up to 70% of the eggs that were parasitized by this uh, Mimoridae. So, uh, and then when you use occurrence data and species distribution modeling, you can see that this wasps occurs or is likely to occur in many area in Europe where Finnish pumaris also occurs. So provided that host specificity is confirmed, which is likely because in this group, um, in most cases, the parasitoids there are specific. And if mass rearing is possible, Octonus vulgatus really could contribute to uh, integrated pest management of Philanus pumarius. So this, uh, this slide, some of these results have been published in a paper, and if you want to uh, know more on this, uh, you can uh, take a look to this, uh, this poster. Well, thank you very much for, for your attention. Uh, keep morale up. Hopefully we are almost done with this bloody virus, and really, really a big up for the organization and technical staff because I'm pretty sure that organizing such a big meeting with uh, this condition must have been very tricky. Thank you very much. A very easy one, I think, is uh, what is the mean longevity of the tested vectors according to seasons in Italy? What is the minimum? The mean? The mean longevity, okay. Uh, the mean longevity is something like five months, I would say. Uh, they emerge as adults uh, in northern Italy beginning of uh, May, in southern Italy earlier, so, and then they last until autumn. So in southern Italy is even more, it's six months. Okay, um, a question for Astrid. In the summer observation of the French peninsula with respect to Corsica, has the humidity or only the temperature been taken into account? We have taken into account the humidity, but uh, results are not completely clear. So we are still running the general linear mixed model analysis to make sure to um, not to say anything wrong about the impact of the humidity. So I keep some some reserve about that, but it will come soon. So just need to adjust the last analysis. Okay. Uh, another question for you. Do you think that cystus can be used as a trap plant to capture vectors? Well, I'm not sure I in I'm not sure I understand the purpose of that, but um for Philanus primarius, I'm pretty sure that if you have cystus, uh, it will attract, uh, at, at least in Corsica, it, it will attract the, uh, the Philanus primarius, but not the other. Mm -hmm. uh, Domenico, a question for you. Why do you think vector acquisition rate is higher in autumn? Is it linked to pathogen load in planta? I have no uh, clear answer to this question, but it is not linked to pathogen load in planta, at least uh, during our experiments. And also, according to the data uh, presented yesterday by Maria, in September, we carried out uh, acquisition experiments uh, toward the end of September. In this period of the year, it seems that the pathogen load in planta is uh, lower than uh, in early season. Uh, the only thing I could think too is a different uh, behavior of the insect. Maybe uh, late in the season, uh, especially females that have to uh, mate to eggs, they feed more actively. And doing this, maybe they can acquire uh, more uh, xylella cells. It's just an hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Uh, Astrid, a question for you. Do you have plans to conduct host specificity tests for the mimarid wasp? Are hyperparasitides known? I'm, I'm sorry, the connection was not good. I did not yeah. hear the, the question it, very well. I'm very questions. sorry, Michel. Yeah, the, the first question was, uh, do you have plans to conduct host specificity tests for the mimarid wasp? And the second one, are hyperparasitoids of the wasp known? For the second one, I, I don't know, and I'm not the specialist, so I, I can't tell. And for the, the first, for the first question, uh, it's no either. <laughs> we don't have contact yet, uh, so no, not yet. Okay. Um, and, uh, a short question or an, and a short answer, please, uh, for the Domenico. Does controlled environmental conditions include increased irrigation in your experiments, of course? And do the insects seek humidity? Uh, no. Uh, controlled env environmental conditions include irrigation, but also semi field conditions include irrigation. I can figure out that uh, evapotranspiration was higher in uh, under semi-field conditions, uh, but uh, plants were not uh, subjected to water stress in the semi-field conditions. As for uh, vectors who potentially seek for humidity, I would say no, but I would say that Philenus probably try to avoid water stress plants because water stress plants uh, have uh, even a higher negative potential of xylem sap and this makes uh, feeding uh, even more uh, uh, energy demanding and difficult. Mm -hmm. And the uh, uh, last question for Astrid, also please a short answer, is Octonus vulgatus specific for Philenus? Good afternoon. Well, uh, Phrenus, uh, Phrenus pumarius is the predominant insect vector in Europe and the, the most abundant in the demarcated vector area in Apulia. And uh, where this species has a main role in the spreading of the bacterium uh, in alive and the other host species, therefore contributing uh, to the severe alive quake declines uh, epidemics. Surveys so, uh, in uh, axillal infected uh, olive grove showed that axillella uh, fastidiosa positive adults can be found on different vegetation compartments all over uh, the adult session. And the uh, previous transmission tests in olive showed uh, the uh, acquisition rates of about uh, 20 percentage insect and the transmission rates uh, was uh, about 26 percentage. Objective of uh, the study is as assess the efficiency of transmission of Xella fastidiosa by Philanus pumarius from uh, source plants showing uh, uh, different susceptibility. Uh, in the, the first uh, the first time uh, we use uh, uh, plants of uh, uh, olive cultivar of resistant uh, cultivar Celino and FS17 and the susceptible cultivar Celino Gardot and Calamata as a uh, source plant for the acquisition uh, test. Uh, in the resistant plants, uh, it's possible to observe uh, the concentration of uh, the bacterium population uh, was uh, lower than uh, a susceptible plant. Uh, uh, we, uh, we use these experiments for understand the difference in the acquisition efficiency in uh, these two uh, Groups of uh, of cultivar. 
Uh, for uh, uh, the second second time, we use almond trees as a, uh, as a source plant because in almond trees, the bacterium is not detectable in the leaves at the beginning of the vegetation season. Then uh, reaches level in of uh, 10 to 4 CFU to microliths. The prevalence of the infection is, is limited compared to olive, uh, olive, pla olive plants. Infected trees do not show several symptoms. In the experiments, uh, uh, we use uh, two varietin lecino and selene in Ardo as a source plant in, uh, in the first uh, orchard and FS17 and Calamat in the second orchard. Uh, we catched the uh, uh, 30 branch for cultivars and uh, we collected the uh, in, uh, specimen of Philemus fumarius uh, in uh, hilt insect in uh, north of uh, Apulia and uh, 50 uh, until 100 insect were introduced for each branch, branch for uh, acquisition access period of uh, three days. Experiments were repeated for three times during uh, June, July, August, September, September, October. Uh, the, uh, for uh, each period, uh, uh, all, uh, all, all branches were uh, analyzed and the population of material was uh, quantified. It's possible to observe, to observe the concentration of the, uh, the population in, uh, in, in uh, uh, resistant plants uh, is two or three, uh, uh, three times uh, 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 lower than, uh, lower than uh, population in, uh, in, uh, in Selina and Kalamata. And it's possible to observe the, the positive branch in, in, in resistant cultivars uh, are lower than uh, Selina and Kalamata. Positive branch. Uh, in almond, uh, we use uh, infect, natural infected almond trees and uh, uh, olive, uh, olive trees uh, uh, as, uh, use uh, positive oxylella of cultivars in Inardo uh, were used uh, as control. The experiments uh, were repeated only two, two times because the third experiment uh, uh, was compromised fro uh, from an uh, infestation of uh, uh, Monoisteira unicostata on the leaves of the almonds. The experiments were conducted in June, July and August, September. Uh, a total of 30 branch caged, uh, caged and uh, 15 and 100 uh, uh, specimens of Lemus fumarius were used, uh, were introduced for each branch, branch and the acquisition uh, and for an acquisition as a spread of three days. Uh, the in five insects for, brain, for uh, branch uh, were uh, transferred in uh, recipient plants, in particular in uh, olive seedlings and uh, uh, pervincle plants. After uh, three days of inoculation assess period, the insects uh, were collected and stored in ethanol and the plants uh, were stored in uh, a greenhouse. Uh, well, in, in this, in this uh, gra the insects were tested individually by QPCR and it's possible to observe by, uh, from molecular analysis that we are the difference in the, acqui uh, in the acquisition uh, 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 by insect from uh, resistant plants or uh, susceptible plants. Uh, it's possible to see the, uh, the insect that feed on cylinder dough uh, had uh, highest uh, percentage of uh, positive uh, insects belonging uh, uh, followed uh, uh, by Kalamata which 8.9 percentage and the Lecino and the FS17 FS uh, which uh, uh, minor 1.8 percentage of uh, positive insect 
the that feed in uh, these two cultivars. The transmission uh, rate in uh, all our seedlings is possible to observe 18.6 percentage of plant positive after transmission test using insect uh, from Selina di Nardò, 70 point percentage using insect from Kalamata and only 1.2 percentage using, uh, uh, using insect from FS17. No transmission was uh, recorded when uh, insects were caged on uh, Lecino. Uh, the transmission rates of uh, pervincular plants uh, is possible to see uh, 26 uh, plants were found positive uh, after inoculation assess period using insect from Selinar, though 5 percentage uh, which uh, using e insect from uh, Kalamata. No transmission occurred uh, with insect feed on Lecino and FS17. Uh, the experiment using almond, uh, the acquisition efficiency in almond is possible to observe the, in the acquisition assess period uh, the insect, uh, uh, the at percentage of uh, positive insect is possible to observe in the insect that feed on olive uh, trees, the, which uh, 18 percentage, and then almond which uh, uh, only 6 percentage of uh, insect positive after uh, acquisition. This is, uh, this is an average of the two experiments. Uh, well, this, uh, in, in these uh, graph, graphs is possible to observe the uh, percentage of uh, the the percentage of recipient plants, uh, infected plant, uh, recipient plants positive after uh, uh, EAP using uh, uh, using insect from alive is possible to uh, is possible to see the I, uh, the either uh, uh, either positive plants than uh, than almond. It's possible to see using uh, olive seedlings or in pervincle. Well, uh, in the conclusion, it's possible uh, uh, the acquisition and transmission efficiency differed according to the different susceptibility of the host plant, showing a positive correlation with the bacterium load in the source plant. Acquisition on olive host tree, which less than 10 uh, to 4 CFU to microlit. Uh, was significantly reduced, and this uh, in turn reduce, reduced the transmission rates. Resistant cultivars uh, showed a low percentage of uh, infected branch on the on the canopy, and this uh, reduced the chance for insect uh, within the plants to acquire the bacterium. Almond trees uh, are susceptible to Xella fastidiosa pauca st53 and, uh, and they are less impact, impacted than olive and may represent a poor reservoir of the bacterium for the vectors. Uh, the data obtained from uh, these experiments uh, confirmed that planting resistant cultivars reduced the pressure of inoculum and uh, uh, slow down the spread of Xylella fastidiosa in area uh, where the bacterium is uh, established. Well, thank you for your attention. Thanks for the ESA organization and uh, all of my colleagues. Thank you which will be given by Sabina Bosani from the Department of Civil, Environmental and Mechanical Engineering from the University of Trento in Italy. And she will talk about the vibrational disruption of the feeding behavior of a plant pathogen vector. Good morning, everybody. I'm Sabina Bosani and I'm here to, uh, to uh, talk about the vibrational disruption of the feeding behavior of Philenos Prumarius. 
the only epidemiologically relevant vector in the uh, in the European outbreaks of Fixilella fastidiosa. So, as uh, we well know, uh, Philanus pumarius um, acquires the bacterium from infected host plants and transmits it, uh, transmit it to healthy olive trees, which becomes infected and, and uh, may show the uh, symptoms of the olive, olive quark decline syndrome. But why it is important to study the feeding behavior of an insect vector? Because if we characterize the feeding behavior of an insect, we can understand the transmission dynamics and understand how the bacterium uh, spread, spreads. Uh, regarding Philanus pumarius and Xylella fastidiosa, we know that the transmission occurs usually a few minutes after uh, the first probe. So, uh, while uh, the acquisition uh, needs uh, more time, so if we want to prevent the probing, be uh, we, if we uh, can prevent probing behaviors, we can reduce the acquisition and the transmission of the bacterium to the plants and reduce the bacterial spread. So, but how can we study the feeding behavior of insects? Well, thanks to the electrical penetration graph technique technique which is uh, consists in a circuit which is completed when the stylet is inserted into the plant tissues. Uh, the output are uh, waveforms that represent the probing and feeding activity of the insect. Uh, the VG is also used to understand how control tools such as insecticide can influence the feeding activity and therefore the pathogen transmission dynamics. Here I put a um, um, work uh, in which uh, the APG was used to, um, to observe how the uh, uh, pesticide inf uh, influenced the feeding uh, behavior of a, a vector, psyllid vector. However, uh, not only pesticide can inf influence the behavior of insects, but also vibration. So uh, we know uh, in the field of biotremology, vibrational signals are used to disrupt relevant behavior, such as mating. So we can use vibration to manipulate the behavior of pest insect insects and, deve and develop pest control techniques as it has been done with the vibrational vineyard against the grip file leaf hopper. So, but this uh, can be done if the insect uses vibration to communicate, uh, at least it's more probable to be effective. And we know that Philanus spumarius uses vibration to communicate, uh, um, especially to identify and find mates on the plant, but also to express distress, for instance, the female rejection signals is used by females to reject males and females, usually after a physical interaction. So the question is, can we use uh, this signal to interfere also with other um, behaviors such as feeding? To answer to the, this question, we design a vibrational synthetic interference signal, or CIS, which we transmitted at low or high intensity to the plant by means of a mini shaker. We tested it on both males and females, and um, they transmit the, the signal was transmitted as a loop for three hours, and uh, the feeding behavior of the insect was simultaneously uh, recorded with the APG, and we tested it on sunflower plants. Here in the picture, the structure of this signal that we use, while here, um, a schematic representation of our setup. Uh, I hope you, you could hear also the signal, which was obtained from the female rejection, but modified and amplified to be even more distressing for the insect. We studied the feed, we recorded the feeding behavior of the insect, uh, which was previously characterized by Cornara and others, and uh, we focus uh, in particular on the uh, xylem ingestion events, even if we, uh, uh, we also recorded and analyzed all the other uh, feeding patterns. 
going to the result, we observed that uh, um, the transmission of the uh, of the playback or the vibrational playback um, resulted in a less low number of insects that were probing the plant. So, at high intensity, more than thirty percent almost 30% of the insects were not probing, so we're not trying to feed on the plant, compared to the silent control. In particular, we also have seen that uh, the high-intensity uh, playback uh, reduced the um, probes that were comprising a sustained xylem ingestion. So the duration of the xylem ingestion events, when the, the, the playback was on, was shorter um, and less insects were uh, uh, performing xylem ingestion events longer than five minutes. Moreover, we observed that the, the playback uh, reduced the total duration of the xylem ingestion. So even um, as you can see in the picture, even both the uh, low and the high intensity playback was significantly different in terms of uh, time spent in, the, in xylem, ingesting xylem than the control. And even if there was not significant differences between the two uh, treatments, if we look at the medians, we can see that the higher uh, intensity was associated uh, to a higher effect. And if we look at the median, we'll see that the high intensity playback uh, was um, reduced three of uh, uh, was three times uh, lower in terms of xylem ingestion duration than the control then we analyzed the trend of the xylem ingestion and we've seen that um, when transmitted at high intensity the play vibrational playback reduced immediately the xylem ingestion duration um, compared to the control and compared to the low intensity playback. In fact, in the low intensity playback, uh, there was a decrease that was more progressive. So the insects were, were probing for less time inside the xylem, uh, starting from the second and third hour of the signal transmission. And this is very important because if uh, the transmission and the acquisition occurs in the first minute after the first probe, a higher um, intensity playback could uh, be more efficient in preventing the transmission and uh, the transmission dynamics of the disease of the bacterium. Moreover, we observed that the playback reduced the number of xylem ingestion events, not only in their duration. And we also observed that the insects, when treated with the play vibrational playback, were um, required more time to re to, to, re to arrive to the xylem vessel. So if we look at the median values, for instance, when the playback was transmitted a high uh, intensity, the time required for the insect to reach the xylem vessel was three times uh, higher compared to the control. Then, but we wanted also to compare the uh, prob the transmission properties of the signal. Uh, let's uh, compare the properties, the transmission of the signal with the original signal. So we recorded with the laser Doppler vibrometer from both from both leaves and stem of the plants how the signal was transmitted and propagated through the plant. And we observed that when transmitted a high intensity, the, our vibrational playback uh, was uh, 10 times um, higher in terms of intensity compared to the low uh, intensity playback. Even if the three main frequency peaks that can, you can see here were uh, rather conserved between the two playbacks. However, uh, the spectral fe features of the signal were different when transmitted compared to the original signal that we designed. So, for instance, as you can see here, um, the frequency range between zero and 400 hertz that were present in the original signal, so when we designed it, were almost lost when transmitted to the uh, sunflower plants. 
and this is very important because um, the main uh, the frequency range uh, of the intraspecific communication of Philenus pumarius occurs in this range. So we could uh, have an effect even with uh, even if the signal um, was not uh, was depleted of this frequency range. So the question is if we could um, enhance the transmission of this frequency range, can we uh, increase the efficiency of the feeding disruption of our playback? And this will be, uh, we will answer with further research. While the take home messages of my presentation are that uh, the vibrational playback that we use could impair the feeding behavior of Philenus pumarius. One, by reducing the number of probes, so the number of times the insects were trying to feed on the plant, but also by reducing the xylem ingestion, both in terms of number of uh, um, times the insect were reaching the xylem, but also in terms of uh, time required to the ins uh, spent the, uh, by the insect inside the xylem vessel. And we also uh, observed that the playback could uh, increase the time required to the insect to reach the xylem vessel and um, ingest xylem fat. Higher effect were, uh, were associated with the higher intensity of the vibrational playback. However, there are still many questions that need an answer. So we need to identify the signal features wherein you are responsible of the uh, disruption of the feeding activity of the insect. We indeed need to test the transmission and the technique on the olive that uh, has a different uh, transmission properties compared to herbaceous plants such as sunflower. And we uh, need to perform transmission trials to see if uh, the signal can um, impair the acquisition and the transmission of the xylella fastidiosa. Of xylella fastidiosa. So, but to conclude, uh, we demonstrated that the vibrational disruption approach is feasible and is an innovative method that should be implemented and tested to be applied in, in the future against us insect vectors such as Philenus pumarius. So uh, we we'll thank you for your attention. Thanks to all the people that helped us during this uh, uh, project and uh, for funding. Uh, the, and if you are more interested in the vibrational in vibrational communication and uh, um, of Philenus pumarius, please take a look to our EA poster. So now we will start with the questions. I have one for Vincenzo related with his talk. Uh, Maria Saponari asks, if, if it was not mentioned in your talk, the, what were the survival rates of the Philenus in the different uh, olive cultivars. Did you notice that uh, there was some mortality? There will be uh, some mortality in these insects that could affect the acquisition efficiency on the different cultivars? Well, yes. Uh, uh, during the our experiments, uh, we don't found the relevant uh, difference in the survival in insect feed in uh, in uh, resistant resistant cultivar or in a susceptible cultivar, we never found the uh, difference uh, in the mortality. Okay. Uh, yeah. So now there is a question for Sabina. Did you compare between insects that could feed before the test and starving the insects? Uh, pardon, if the insects were uh, starved, if the insects were starved before starting the test, the feeding behavior sure, test. Sure, sure, sure. We left and the insect for a, uh, for a period without feeding. I guess the question is if the, if the um, starving of the insect could affect the behavior in this case. Well, both uh, the control insect and the, um, and the, uh, the insect transmitted with the playback were uh, in the same condition before the test. So in this case, there is no differences between them. 
but because also for uh, uh, so for instance, I think that could be there dif some differences if it but if you don't starve the insect will not really understand um, if the insects are not feeding because they are not interested because they are already where they are not hungry. So in any case, we prefer to let the insect for starved, uh, starving for at least um, one or two hours before uh, the both the control test and the transmission test. And we also always uh, tested the insect um, in same in the same uh, same day at least having a uh, a play the play the we tested the insect um, the control and the and the treated always in the same days also to exclude potential variables uh, due to the um, temperature the more to the environmental conditions. Okay, <laughs> so. Uh, are there any more questions? I don't see any more in the questions and answer window. Uh, I just have one question for Vincenzo. Do you think that the feeding preference of the phylenos will vary between those cultivars that are less susceptible to the transmission of uh, Silella fastidiosa? Uh, sorry, can you, can, uh, can you repeat, please? that I would ask you if there would be any uh, uh, vari variability in the susceptibility of the cultivars to the phylenus itself. I mean, not only to the transmission of the bacteria, but also on the susceptibility to the vector. Uh, yeah, uh, for uh, uh, the transmission uh, on uh, uh, resistant, uh, resistant cultivar, we never found if uh, we have a few da a few dates about this because uh, uh, we use for the transmission uh, or uh, uh, all our seedlings, but uh, in uh, in our in in our experiment uh, using Lecino and Celina uh, Dinardo, uh, we uh, we we found no, we we didn't found the statistical difference in the transmission. Marina Morente from uh, the Instituto Madrileño Investigación y Desarrollo Agrario in Nidra, who will be talking about host plant selection by Filenus espumarius using ground covers as trap crops. Hello, everybody. Thank you for attending this talk. Um, first of all, to remember uh, the containment strategies against Cirela fastidiosa in Europe are based in the demarcation of a buffer zone, as you can see here in purple and light blue, and an infected zone that contains a containment area and the rest of the infected zone where the trees are removed uh, within a 50 meters uh, radius around the infected area. Moreover, uh, to vector populations control, uh, it's common to apply agrochemicals and the removal of the ground cover within the crops. Unfortunately, uh, these practices have a high environmental impact, especially in the Mediterranean basin, where uh, it's common to find uh, stone fruits in steep areas, as you can see here in the photo from the Guadalajara province, where Silela fastidiosa is affecting almond groves in Spain. So the removal of the trees and the ground cover in these areas increase severely the, the soil erosion with a marked soil loss, soil impoverishment, water runoff, or soil arthropofauna community loss. So in this study, we focus on the nymphal state as the most suitable target to apply alternative control methods because their seasonality, they are only present in the spring at the field. They have a low displacement, they produce shiny white foamy masses, as you can see in the picture, that are very visible at the field. They have a gregarious behavior, so we can find more than one nymph in the same spittle, and they are associated with a uh, ground cover. And regarding the, the last point, in recent years, there are several studies in Europe focused in the identification of host plants of Philenus spumarius nymphs. This is one of them by Bodino collaborators in Italy, 
where they identified 98 plant genera of host plant species in olive roof, and they uh, highlight Asteraceae and Fabaceae as the most infested uh, families. Similarly, in northern Portugal, uh, Bian collaborators identified in olive roofs from 11 families the Asteraceae, Colestophus myconis, and Sontus terranimus as the most infested host plants in the ground cover. And here in Spain, we collected data from grapevine, olive roof, and almond roof, and we highlight uh, Sontus soleraceus, crepis, and picris as the Asteraceae most preferred by the nymphs in ground covers, and others such as Cerodium, Meringium campestre, or Asparagus. So here in this study, we want to propose the postpone mechanism as an alternative control method for the names of Philenus spumarius in this, in this case. Uh, this mechanism is within the trap cropping strategy that use plants as ecological structures to uh, pest population control. As you can see here in the, in the scheme, uh, a repellent plant is placed within the cash crop this repellent plant has a push effect on the insects and the insects tend to move to the margins where a trap crop highly attractive has a push effect on the on the pest aggregating the insects in the in this plant the trap crop may have a lethal effect on the pest or may facilitate the removal of the insects from the crop by methods for population reduction such as biological control or mechanical procedures. So here in this study, our general objectives are to identify plant species commonly used as ground covers in woody crops, to be used as trap or repellent plants to manage the names of Philenus spumarius, and to find out which host plant species are more or less attractive for a position to disrupt the Philenus spumarius population growth. First, I'm going to, to focus on the NIMS preferences. For our study, we collected a high number of NIMS in the community of Madrid, and most of them on Eringium campestre, as you can see in the picture. We selected 1,300 Philanus spumarius NIMS from N3 to N5 nymphal stages uh, to ensure the mobility and survival during the trials and the names were kept under control, control conditions until the trial. We selected 10 plant species according to the recommendation of different seed, seed companies dedicated to the ground cover settlement in olive groves and taking into account that most of these species are common in natural ground cover in olive groves as well. So, I'm going to explain the design of the known choices A. We used the 10 plant species in eight replicates. The 10 plants were placed randomly in every block, as you can see here. Every block was compounded by different arenas. One, uh, every arena had 50 centimeters per side, and we placed four plants uh, from the same species in the corners. Every arena was isolated by mesh cages, as you can see here, to avoid the movement, movement of the nymphs outside the, the arena. And we released five nymphs per replicate. And for the free choices say, we used a similar design with the 10 plant species, but in this case, we used a circular two meter diameter arena where we placed randomly the 10 plant species and in this case, we didn't isolate the plants because we wanted to permit the movement of the nymphs between the species. And we released 50 nymphs in the center of every arena. And we performed the two trials at the same time, as you can see here in the photo, in a greenhouse. And we monitored the, the two trials, 24, 48, 72, 72 hours and seven days after the nymphs are released and collected data about the number of foams per plant, nymphs per foam, dead nymphs, and adult summer. Now we are going to see the results from the non-choice essay, where we wanted to see the daily and cumulative mortality of the nymphs in the different plant species. 
here we, we, we can see that the host plant showed a significant effect on the daily mortality rate of the nymphs in the different plant species, while the day of monitoring didn't show any significant effect. From the 10 plant species, Antriscus terefolium in light blue, uh, Diplotaxis tenifolia in pink, and Lavandula angustifolia in, in yellow, showed the highest daily mortality rate of the nymphs. Now the results on the cumulative mortality showed that Antriscus terefolium and Diplotaxis tenifolia had the highest number or percentage of nymphs dead at the seventh day of the trial, followed by Sinapis salva with a 60% of the nymphs dead at the seventh day. Now uh, I will talk about the results from the free choices say to see the host plant preferences by the nymphs. And here we see that the host plant, the day, and the interaction between both showed a significant effect uh, on the occupancy rate of the nymphs in the different plant species. And from them, Sinapis salva and Taraxacum officinale were the most preferred plants with the highest occupancy rates, while Diplotaxis tenuifolia in pink showed the lowest occupancy rate. So here, uh, with our results, we conclude that Sinapis salva and Antriscus terefolium are two plants that showed characteristics to be used as trap crops. Lavandula angustifolia could be used as a complement trap crop because showed um, medium levels of mortality and occupancy rates, but is an attractant of beneficial arthropods. Diplotaxis tenuifolia with a high mortality rate, a high cumulative mortality, and the lowest occupancy rate could be a candidate repellent plant. And Parasacrum officinalis should be avoided in Silella fastidiosa susceptible crops. Here we can see a scheme with the, with the distribution of the different plants with Diplotaxis tenuifolia within the woody crop and the woody crop surrounded by the three trap crops in the margins. And now I'm going to, I'm going to focus on the oviposition preference of the adults by the different plant species. Here, the objectives are to know the oviposition preference of Philonus spumarius on different herbaceous plant species commonly present in woody crops, and to assess the effect of the presence and absence of first plant on oviposition rates. So here we used four plant species, Sontus oleraceus because we know that it's a suitable host plant for Philanus spumarius. Bromus madritensis because showed a low occupancy rate and a low mortality in the nymphals trials. We wanted to see that Diplotaxi, if Diplotaxis tunifolia was a repellent for adults as well, and to see the effect of Taraxacum officinale in the oviposition rates. We developed a semi-field condition uh, experiment with four experimental cages with one meter per site. And here we placed the four plant species in the corners, four plants, four individuals per, per species. And under the first plant, we placed plant debris and plant debris in the center of every arena to see the effect of the presence or absence of fresh plant in the reposition rate. Moreover, we used a control cage to, to assess the fertility of the nymphs using Sontus oleraceus as host plant and uh, pine needles as a straw. And we released five, nine females and 18 males per cage. The, um, the experiment was performed from mid-October to mid-December and monitored every seven days, every, every seven days, sorry. And we gathered data about the number of ecchymeses per the different plant species, the plant debris and the presence or absence of the fresh plant in the in the ecmasis. Finally, this is these are the first results obtained where we saw that the position of the first plant had a had a significant effect on the number of ecmasis found, and we found 49 uh, ecmasis under fresh plant and only two without fresh plant. 
Moreover, the plant species, uh, the plant species in the plant debris had a significant effect too, and we found most of the egg masses and we, in Taraxacum officinale, and most of the egg masses were laid be, from 20 October to the 3rd of November. So we conclude that Pyrenus spumarius lays the eggs preferentially on the plant debris of Taraxacum officinale under fresh plant. And overall conclusions to say that Diplotaxis tonifolia and Bromus madritensis were the less selected host plant species for oviposition. And regarding the results obtained from the nymphal trials and the uh, adult experiment for oviposition, we can conclude that Diplotaxis tonifolia is a suitable candidate as repellent plant for Phyllenus spumarius, while Taraxacum officinale should be avoided in olive groves and other Cirella fastidiosa susceptible crops. Finally, I would like to thank to my partners because they help a lot in these trials and the funding to, to develop these, these studies. And thank you for your attention. The next talk will be presented by Crescenza Don Giovanni from the Centro di Serza Formazione e Experimentazione in Agricoltura, Basile Caramia, de Lo Corotondo, Bari. And she will be talking about defining a set of integrated tools recommended for IPM strategy to control spittlebacks. Okay, uh, good afternoon to everyone. I report the results of uh, different uh, years of uh, experimentation for the evaluation of a different uh, method for the control of uh, UNIL and adults of uh, Philenus fumarius. Uh, Philenus fumarius is the main vector of Xera fastidiosa in U Europe and uh, also during uh, different survey carried out from our uh, group from uh, 2015 uh, from uh, the last year we have ob observed that uh, generally uh, the density population of Philenus fumarius is higher than others are certain vector uh, of Xella fastidiosa, Philenus italosinius uh, and uh, Neophilus campesti, not only in olive grove, but also in uh, sherry, almond orchard and uh, border plant. So the vector control is uh, the principal method available for limited speed of the pathogen in a contaminant area. Uh, adult of Finesse humarius uh, become infect soon after they move on infected plant, uh, generally in our uh, region in May to June, and then they retain uh, the bacterium and the percentage of infected insect uh, is higher during uh, the summer and uh, autumn. So uh, the key to reduce, reducing the density population of uh, Philenses pumarius is the control of the uh, juvenile in order to avoid that adults visit infected plant and uh, so then uh, can contribute to uh, speed the inoculum in uh, the crop. Uh, the best time to control the juvenile is when uh, the, they, uh, the uh, juveniles reach the stage of uh, four instar. Uh, in a previous st uh, study, we have observed that uh, when uh, the juvenile uh, reach this uh, peak, uh, all the eggs uh, present in the, the site are uh, etched. Uh, so uh, the uh, intervention uh, executed in uh, these stations uh, ensure the, uh, go, uh, the good effectiveness and destroyed all the juveniles in uh, the site. Uh, the difficulty is uh, to uh, verify when in different sites are uh, at the peak of the four in star. Um, during our, our survey, uh, we have observed that, that uh, from the uh, coastal site uh, uh, in comparison to uh, area with high uh, altitude, the, the lie of the uh, peak is uh, about 20 to 30 uh, days. It is, uh, so it is uh, most important uh, a monitoring survey from the UNI to um, indicated to the grove the best time for the uh, intervention. Uh, we have uh, carried out different uh, 
uh, experiment in order to uh, verify uh, the um, different management uh, ground uh, vegetation for uh, reduction of the density population of uh, juvenile. Uh, the treatment that we have uh, compared are uh, salt tillage, piro weeding, mulching, uh, shallow plunging, a contact herbicide applied at uh, four instar, while systemic herbicide were applied at the end of uh, the winter. As uh, is uh, evident in this slide, almost all uh, the different interventions show higher effectiveness against uh, both split and bug, Finance fumarius and uh, ne Neophilens campesti, except for uh, contact herbicides uh, showed uh, low effectiveness against uh, Filenus uh, spumarius. Uh, we have uh, also evaluated um, different uh, management uh, co uh, comparison uh, um, uh, mulching with uh, soil tillage in uh, different uh, farm and uh, we have observed that generally uh, soil tillage uh, showed high effectiveness as compared uh, to uh, uh, mulching and also among uh, the soil tillage not all uh, they showed high effectiveness depending from the mode of executed uh, of uh, this uh, intervention. While uh, if the wheels remain in, uh, on uh, the soil, uh, the um, juvenile or finalis spumarius can complete their uh, sac and uh, become uh, adult and so can move on uh, the uh, canopy. Uh, for uh, two consecutive years, we have also evaluated uh, the possibility of sowing poace, uh, lolium and uh, ordeum in uh, comparison to uh, a single application applied during the winter and the application applied uh, two times in the winter and in uh, the spring. All the treatment are uh, effective in uh, the control of uh, Philenus fumarius, except the uh, uh, single app application during uh, the winter. Uh, while this treatment uh, showed good effectiveness against Neophilus campestis, uh, uh, and contrary, the sowing of uh, uh, lolium and uh, poache is uh, showing inconsistent results against Neophilus campesti, in particular after two years of uh, experimentation in uh, the same uh, field. Uh, we have also evaluated uh, different uh, products, uh, uh, systemic insecticides and uh, natural uh, compound uh, for verifying the possibility of uh, reducing the density population of uh, juveniles. In uh, our uh, trial, we have observed that uh, neonicotinoids and pyrotroid uh, always show the high effectiveness uh, uh, for uh, the control of uh, juveniles, uh, followed with, uh, by bufrefensin, while uh, all others tested product uh, inert compound, kaolin and uh, zeolitia, uh, antagonisti microbic, boveria bassiana and uh, orange oil and uh, mineral oil generally uh, show the lower effectiveness as uh, compared to, uh, to systemic and insectic sites. Uh, regarding uh, the adults, uh, we have uh, tested uh, different uh, product in a semi-field condition. In uh, the cage, we have uh, insert a prefixed number of uh, adult before the application and uh, after the uh, a determinate day after uh, the treatments. And then we have evaluated the number of dyad insects and uh, survival insects. Generally, we have executed the application in spray. Uh, few products uh, were applied in endotherapy. Uh, 
Uh, our uh, result uh, shows that, that uh, neonicotinoids and the pyrethroid is observed against the UVA, uh, juvenile showed high uh, prolonged effect and high persistence with uh, five, uh, 50 uh, uh, to uh, uh, 20 days for pyrethroid and uh, uh, 20 to 25 days for uh, neonicotinoid. Uh, uh, high effic efficacy were, uh, were, uh, was observed also in uh, chantranilipole uh, treatment, uh, while organophosphorate showed uh, inconsistent uh, results. Uh, the, uh, among uh, this family, the, the best results were observed applied for, uh, FOSMET with uh, 50 days of uh, persistence. Uh, uh, other uh, product showed low effectiveness uh, among uh, the natural compounds, only uh, extract orange oil showed a good prompt effect, but without uh, persistence. Uh, among uh, other um, uh, in, uh, systemic insecticides, uh, pimetrozine, spiretotretamat, uh, uh, clonicamid, uh, um, and among uh, natural substances, piretrine and adriactina, do not show any effect for the control of adult of Philems spumarius. Uh, Dimetoate and uh, imidacopid added in uh, injection showed uh, lower action that the same product applied in the spine and uh, the uh, similar effect of uh, persistence. Uh, then we, uh, we want to evaluate uh, the effect on transmission on uh, olive uh, of uh, uh, application with uh, um, caolino uh, in field condition and other uh, products uh, in semi-field condition. This result is reported on uh, the poster. Uh, in synthesis, we have observed that uh, in um, field condition, uh, first infected plant uh, in uh, um, area with uh, uh, plants exposed to natural uh, infected in set, uh, uh, first infected plant compared after six months in untreated check, while uh, uh, appeared after one year, one in Kaolin treatments and after uh, two years in uh, imidacloprid uh, treatment. While first symptom in untreated check appeared after one uh, years in, in treated check, after two years in Kaolin treatment, and after uh, three years in imidacloprid treatment. In synthesis, we have observed that the application with a uh, repellent product and also with chemical uh, product uh, do not um, avoid the uh, infection of the ol uh, olive, but uh, delay uh, the infection, you know, prob probably for the uh, the redu reduction of the visit of the olive and the, the, uh, the, the number of uh, the, the transmission that occur during uh, the years. Um, in the semi-female uh, condition, we have evaluated uh, five insecticides and we have observed a high rate uh, mortality using pyrethroid and uh, neonicotinoid, low uh, rate of uh, uh, dyed insect using uh, FOSMET. Regard the infection, uh, we have a record uh, on seed, uh, seedlings when Spitegab were introduced uh, three days after uh, neonicotinoid uh, and uh, delta metrina, uh, while um, this product uh, uh, reduced uh, or no infection were observed after seven days or 50 days from the treatment. So 
can conclude this also in uh, this uh, condition. Uh, in the short uh, period, uh, it is possible to uh, avoid infection, but in the long uh, period, um, only uh, neonicotinoid, uh, in particular imidacloprid, can avoid uh, infection, while the other uh, products uh, reduce the, the transmission, but uh, during the time, the, the seedling, uh, seedlings are uh, infected. Uh, the crucial uh, decision is when it is the best time to execute uh, the intervention against uh, the adults. Considering that uh, insects uh, of finesse mice acquire uh, the bacteria soon after they move on an infected uh, plant, uh, um, in order to avoid that uh, adults acquire the bacteria, the best time to control uh, the adult insects is when they move on uh, the canopy. Uh, and uh, then another application is, is uh, necessary after 15 to 25 uh, days, depending from the uh, product persistence. Uh, and uh, then uh, it is necessary uh, execute a frequent survey to verify the presence of uh, adults in uh, the orchard and uh, um, execute eventually orders in intervention or, and verify uh, if uh, um, the uh, execute intervention show the uh, efficacy against uh, the, uh, the adult of uh, Philenus uh, spumarius. In synthesis, uh, we can conclude that uh, systemic insecticide showed uh, agid uh, prompt effect and persistence up to uh, 15 to 20 days, uh, while other systemic product, uh, product showed uh, low efficacy as compared to uh, this uh, uh, insecticide. Among the natural product, only extract of orange oil showed good uh, uh, prompt effect, but with no persistence. The slow action uh, was observed when the dimetoato and imidacoprid were applied uh, in, uh, by injection as compared with spray application. Uh, use of inert compound against adults did not reduce the speed of the infection in the long term period, and also the use of insecticide under field condition. Uh, reduction uh, the production of the infection, but not uh, fully prevent the plant uh, from uh, the infection. Application of insecticide under confident condition show uh, in uh, the short period, three days, uh, transmission uh, were impeded, but uh, while we're only limited in the long period, 7 to 15 days, but not, uh, do not prevent uh, the uh, infection. Given uh, the difficulty to effectively control the speed of uh, uh, the bacterium by, uh, by adult speed bug, uh, major effort should, uh, should be directed uh, to reduction the population of the juvenile, uh, juvenile stage. Uh, soil tillage performed at the right time of the development of the NIF remained the most effective strategy to suppress immature and prevent emergence of the adults. Systemic herbicides and insecticide show against the juvenile high effectiveness, but they are, are insustainable methods. Pyramid and, and marching show good effectiveness uh, followed by natural compound, kaolin, zeolite, uh, boveria bassana, orange oil, and, uh, oil. Uh, destruction eggs mass using saltage in late winter is uh, not effective against filet uh, spumaris, but show good effectiveness against neophilens uh, campestris. Sowing poache specie to replace the ground vegetation reduction the finesse of Mars UNL, but in the length period increase the density population of uh, neophilens uh, campestris. 
uh, the um, uh, intervention against the juvenile, uh, we have observed that is the best effectiveness, but only when acted at the territorial level, while when acted in a lim limited area are not sufficient to prevent the spread of the adults that move from uh, no, no tillage uh, area um, to uh, tilled uh, soil. Uh, I thank you for your attention and I thank to uh, your uh, the collaborator that uh, have contributed uh, for uh, the obtain the, the results of uh, this uh, experiment. Thank you. Are the plants you used uh, possible are possible hosts for for Silella fastidiosa, the ones that you tested? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I don't know now if they are uh, possible hosts, but there are several herbs that are susceptible to Cidella fastidiosa. We have um, a work, a recently work that I have showed a, a table in the presentation where there are several plant species and um, the, half of them are susceptible to Cidella fastidiosa. So I think that is the next step and is a must to to test if this species, if you want to apply this method in the field, is a must to test if these species are susceptible for the, the bacterium, especially for the trap crops, because the repellent plant are go, is going to to move the to to repel the the nymphs, but the trap crops are going to aggregate the nymphs and some of of those nymphs can pass to the adult. Nevertheless, uh, in the case of the nymphs, I have to say when the nymphs molt, they lose the bacterium. So there is no uh, there is no threat in, in this case. But when the adult is present in the in the field, it could be it could be dangerous. So it's a, it's the next step to to apply this method. Okay. And also the other question is, do the plants experimented as repellents toxicants are usually cultivated in olive orchards? Are they recommended in, in olive orchards? Mm -hmm. The 10 plant species that we have used are recommended for uh, ground cover in olive orchards by the seed companies. So they are, they are common. They are common south and they are common in natural ground covers because here in Spain, uh, several farmers tend to leave the natural ground cover. And in this case, the Blodaxis thermifolia, that is the repellent plant that we have detected, is very common as natural ground cover in, in olive groves. And in our experience, we have never found any, any spittle in this plant. Okay, do you think that the plants, the insects were reared on before the choice tests affect the insect preferences? Mm -hmm. um, all the all the nymphs uh, were were managed and in the same way. So we collected the nymphs in the in the field from Merinium campestris, mo, campestri most, mostly, and we we put the we catch the the nymphs on Sontus soleratus, that is a host plant that we know that is a suitable plant for rearing, and. To say that the first nymphal stages are less polyphagous and they tend to, to feed on, on Asterace mostly or, or rosette shaped uh, plants, but the nymphs from M3 or M4, M5 nymphal stages are more polyphagous and they tend to move to different plant species such as Asparagus or Foeniculum vulgare. So I think that uh, it should be not be any any uh, any effect of the of the plant when we rear the the nymphs. Okay, uh, then to Crescenza, do you now we will move to the questions for Crescenza. Do you know if the frequent tillage uh, may be used as a control strategy against Philenus? Is it a good way to control Philenus? 
frequently? Mm, no, uh, I think it is important uh, to target the, the UNI and the, the stage of uh, four instars. Uh, if uh, a single applica application uh, manage intermenti on a uh, very secure in this stage is uh, enough to control uh, uh, the juvenile present in, uh, in the site. Okay, yeah, that, that was the question. If you recommend to to keep tilling the, the soil to prevent the presence of juveniles. Yes. Okay, uh, now, uh, well, there are no more questions, I think. Yes, one more. What do you think? Uh, it would be the best combination of insecticide treatments and management strategies, environmentally speaking? Uh, I think it is uh, very important uh, to uh, uh, combine the different strategy uh, for the control of uh, uh, the, the split bug. Uh, the, uh, the, the best uh, intervention is the control of the UNIs, but also uh, the control uh, of uh, uh, adult when they move on uh, uh, the canopy, it is uh, important for redu uh, reduction of the population and so to reduce the possibility of the visit and uh, uh, reduce the, the spread of the, the disease in the infected uh, area. Okay. okay. Um, what do you plan to occur in the fields? using ground repellent plant under high canopy crops? This is a not easy question to understand. No, I think this one needs to be redefined. I, I cannot understand the question. Uh, I don't see any more questions uh, regarding your talk or Marina's talk. So I think uh, before we finish, I would just uh, want to announce that there are several posters uh, that are related with these two last uh, talks and with the rest of the talks that were presented today. Uh, so these talks would be, I mean, these posters should be, uh, are divided, I have divided them in six different topics, which I think it's worthwhile to look at them. Some of the of the posters relate with different types of traps and other sampling methods to monitor vector populations. There are also posters on studies on transmission of Cirela fastidiosa by, by vectors by people from Europe and also from Brazil. Uh, migration studies on vectors, the response of vectors to volatiles, attraction and repellents. Uh, there are some posters on biocontrol about egg parasitoids and spiders as well. And there are also some uh, posters th that deal with population genetics and barcoding. So with this, I think we are uh, finished with the session on vectors. And thanks very much everybody for attending the talks.